What's up guys, how are y'all doing today? Today I'm going to be talking about something that is very crucial to pretty much every electric car out there and that is energy or specifically speaking kilowatt hours. So every single electric car uses kilowatt hours for their battery sizes but recently manufacturers have stopped using that as a marketing term and just spit out the range figures, the charging time and that's about it. And that's fair because that's not really useful to the average consumer. To the average consumer you just want a car that works and just works like a car. You don't want to know all this fancy stuff. So I'm going to break down what kilowatt hour actually means. So let's start off from the basics. A kilowatt hour is just 1000 watt hours and one watt is a unit of power. For example, I have this light running over here and it's probably using somewhere around maybe one, maybe two watts, but let's keep it around one watt of energy. This is an LED light, that's why it consumes very little power. In your home, if you have a light that's on the roof, it might actually use more, maybe 10 watts, maybe 15. And if you have those incandescent bulbs, which are crazy inefficient and basically they heat up the coil to actually produce light, those might actually be using up to 60 watts or 100 watts, depending on what size or how much light capacity that bulb is. So how do you get watt hour? Well, for example, if you run that 60 watt light bulb for one hour, it used one watt hour of energy. So watt hour is the energy used or capacity in a battery pack. For example, you have a battery pack that is 120 watt hours. You can use that 60 watt light bulb for two hours. Now, if you have a more efficient light bulb, like the LED one that I have right here, or just, you know, the LED ones that you actually use in your house, assuming that light bulb takes only 10 watts of power because it's LED, 120 watt hours divided by the 10 watts it takes gives you the hours. 12 hours. Pretty simple. So now we get to cars. Now cars take a lot of energy to move in case you haven't realized already. For example, the Tesla Model 3, the battery pack in the Tesla Model 3 has enough energy to power your house for up to four or maybe five days. And that car uses the energy in just 500 kilometers of driving or about 300 miles worth of driving. So cars require a lot of energy to move. And that is why these battery packs are immense. And that's why the energy figures we're talking about are immense. The Tesla Model 3 battery pack is about 75 kilowatt hours. So one kilowatt hour is just 1000 watt hours. So you can just multiply them together and you get 75,000 watt hours. So now what you can do is actually take that really inefficient light bulb we had earlier, the example that I took earlier, uh, 60 watts, you can actually take that example and apply it to this. So you do 75,000 watt hours divided by 60 watts, the light bulb, and you get about 12,050 hours worth of use time. That's a lot. In fact, that's 52 days of that light bulb running continuously. So why is this important? Well, it's important because efficiency. And an electric car, the more efficient it is, the less energy it'll use. That means the less it'll cost for it to run and basically the less energy you'll actually put into the battery. It's basically a higher MPG you can consider it. So the higher the MPG figure on a gas vehicle, the less it costs you to actually run that vehicle, the less fuel it uses. It's the same thing here. The lower the energy, the lower watt per whatever distance you want to use. Some people use miles per kilowatt hour, other people use watt hours per mile or watt hours per kilometer stuff like that. So it's very interchangeable and they're not really that different. For kilometers to miles, you basically just multiply it by 1.6. One mile is 1.6 kilometers, more or less. And the reason this is important is because if you're going online to shop for a car, there are actually mainly two things that you might encounter. One is the range figure and maybe battery figure relating to that range or the other one might just be the efficiency. And those are very big factors considering the range of the vehicle. Now the Tesla Model 3 is the most efficient vehicle or efficient electric vehicle out there in the market right now. So the Model 3 uses about 160 watt hours per kilometer. And you can simply multiply that number by 1.6 to get the miles. And that gives us a number of 256 watt hours per mile. And why this is important is because of this main Factor. Taking this example again, 256, let's round that down to 250, keep it a nice round number, calculations are much easier, and basically with one kilowatt of energy you can drive about four miles. Well then we can actually just do the calculation, pretty simple calculation, you could just do 75,000 watt hours divided by 250 watt hours and basically get how many miles the car can actually travel. And so you get a nice round figure of 300 
miles. That's pretty much what the range of the Model 3 is. Now, obviously, this is dependent on various factors like your weather, your climate, and basically how you drive the vehicle. So if you drive very aggressively, you punch it at every red light, you're going to get worse efficiency. So if you drive really fast, say 80, 90, even 100 miles an hour on the interstate, you're not going to get that much range. You're not even going to get close to 300 miles of range. Forget that. Even if you look at MPG figures for gas cars, you rarely get those in the real world. And this is partly why it's important to understand what the efficiency of the vehicle is and what's the size of the battery pack. So the bigger the battery pack, the more inefficient the vehicle, it can still get plenty of range. But the smaller the battery pack, and if the vehicle is super efficient, say in warmer climates, but it's extremely inefficient at colder climates, you're going to take a drastic range hit in the cold climates. Or say if you go up north, travel there, whatever, you're going to see a significant drop in range. Now I think I'm overcomplicating most of this because you don't really need to know most of the things. It's just knowing the range of the vehicle and how that vehicle actually fits your needs is usually more than enough to convey you either one way whether you should buy it or you should hold off. And these days electric vehicles are coming with massive ranges. Most of the cars that are coming up from other automakers, legacy automakers for just new startups, they're having plenty of range. Like look at Lucid Motors, they're planning on having a range target of 517 miles. In the real world going 60, 70, 80 miles an hour you're not going to achieve that. You'll probably get 400 but that's still a lot especially because with a bigger battery pack you can actually dump more power into the battery so you'll actually charge quicker and by charge quicker i mean how long does it take to add one kilometer or how long does it take to add 100 kilometers or whatever measurement you want to use a lot of manufacturers are trying to do this it's very complicated right now it's a complete mess just look at the range figure that you want you know say 400 miles of range you'll wait for a car or an ev with 400 miles of range only then you'll start you know actually looking into vehicles and manufacturers are actually just having a hard time producing them because they just can't find the batteries so really it's happening it's coming all those high range electric vehicles are coming in the future maybe three four years from now we'll have cars with 800 miles of range maybe even a thousand miles of range although it's debatable how useful that is just about 1600 kilometers of range if it's like a semi truck sure but if it's a normal everyday car i don't think you need that much range or just just that much battery pack at all so hope you got something out of this and if you have any questions remaining that you want answered or something or if you want some clarification about what i talked about just leave them in the comments down below and i'll get to you back thank you for watching and i'll talk to you in the next one peace